your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We're focusing in on a viewer question we got in and that is, uh, why is the narcissist so judgmental? Why does it seem like they're always so unhappy? Why does it seem like they're always constantly on the go, that they're not really available for a relationship? Why is the narcissist seemingly so unhappy? Despite uh, different uh, situations where they're um, you know, the one with all the attention and, you know, the, the loud, the loud one in the room, yet they seem so uh, particularly unhappy. So I want to address that, um, a question um, here in this video, and hopefully it'll help to belay some of your fears about letting uh, this person go, or at least have them, give them back their personal space and begin to draw the line as to the impact, uh, the negative impact that they've had on your life and really imprinted on your subconscious. Uh, because the idealized phase where you would perhaps first encounter this individual, it was uh, a sort of feeling like you had met someone who was very unique, special, um, and important to you. And perhaps they had filled in a certain void that was missing in your life. And this, in the idealization phase, um, which another viewer had inquired about, is this, you know, between, you know, how does this compare between the psychopathic or the narcissistic? Um, either way, just understand that there are some people who really, really, truly thrive on being the one in the center of attention. They need to get their, you know, they need to get their ego out. They need their ego to be interacting with the group. Um, they are not comfortable being on the same level. It just is very uncomfortable for them. And so for, for the narcissist, their comfort zone is their failure zone. To be constantly the one in, in attention, uh, the constantly the one who is getting the attention directed to them versus them giving, um, realize that they, they tend to really, I mean, for lack of a better way to put it, they, they really feel like the world um, revolves around them. They feel like, you know, you know the, not only is the world their oyster, but... And not a true like internal happiness sort of contentment and that really is the root of, of happiness is that it's a, a feeling of well-being and contentment and peace and balance and kind of being able to understand and, re, uh, and, and live life with a sense of certainty and confidence yet and, and not feeling like you life has to always be a struggle or there's an overwhelm of uncertainty or unpredictability and the negative fear and guilt and obligation and um, rejection, you know, all these things th that tend to create and foster the anxiety, which is the secondary emotion. Um, so why, you know, why are they uh, apparently unhappy or why do they have to, you know, see constantly seek this validation? Why can't they just be like me, basically, I think is the question. Why are they different or unique in this or why are they so separate? Um, really, because it's part of the core of their personality disorder is this pathological need, pathological meaning not normal, uh, pathological meaning um, not healthy, and uh, really aberrant, uh, creating an aberrant behavior or um, really not conducive to happiness, health, well-being, or integrity, things that are really the, the, the positive growth values which we see in humanity. I mean, if we can boil it down, it's really all about the individual and not about the group for them. And, you know, many cultures, they, they, re, they have re, reverence and respect. For example, you know, the, the Japanese, they have great reverence and great respect for their elders. These people who have lived through, through certain experiences, they've had more life experiences and, and more um, lessons learned. So they, they have a reverence for, these, uh, for the elders. And um, it's, it's one of respect and it's one of, of admiration. And now with the narcissist, they basically want this respect even when it's counter to their personality characteristics. They, they automatically expect reverence and respect without oftentimes congruent behaviors to match it. They just seem to demand and expect it even though their behaviors aren't warranted of respect. But people will then get into the group think or the negative social influence Well, they will side with them because it's more pleasant to just keep your mouth shut and not confront 
than it is to call them out or to say that's incorrect. Um, people don't want to ruffle the apple cart. Um, they don't want to, uh, you know, they, they, they don't want to um, call attention to themselves. It's just easier to fall back into line and do what we've always done. It's more difficult to change oftentimes. But eventually there will become an evolution really in the group where a change is a must. Change will be required. Change is inevitable. So rather than stalling off the inevitable and just having everything tend to fall back um, onto the narcissist, Eventually, something is going to happen where someone else is going to step up and have the attention um, and a positive attention, and it's because of, of you know a respect that they've earned by either them you know having their, their clear vision or being there for people or the just their stance that they they take being the person that they are. So there's an inherent unhappiness I think with the narcissist because they don't feel that self. Uh, contentment. They don't feel the uh, they don't feel the happiness if they don't have that constant attention. So it's an insatiable need, Sam Vakin, to constantly go out and be controlling, have the power over other people. They can't just let things be. They just can't. They're not comfortable with the organics or being in um, being around the vulnerability. They don't want to show that human side. They want to be the invincible. They want to be the knight in shining armor. They want to be the marble statue. Uh, they really want to be this uh, very stoic or, you know, commanding of this respect. And yes, they might be uh, very prolific. They might have um, a lot of assets. They might be very responsible and accountable in their job. They can be very talented, but it doesn't mean that they don't have uh, a certain softer side or a certain vulnerable side, but oftentimes they just don't want to let it show. That's the thing. They're able very much to keep it under lock and key, and they're not going to, you know, uh, wear their emotions on their sleeve. Uh, the narcissist is very adept at shutting down any sort of insecurity within them. They they just um, don't want to come out and say it. But eventually, if you're around them long enough, they're going to admit. I, you know, I couldn't commit to this relationship because I'm very this and this way. So they will eventually admit their flaws. They will admit their shortcomings. And um, yet they will then just tend to go on with their their ways that are self-serving. And, um, and oftentimes they are very unhappy underneath. And they don't have that sort of contentment, that sort of happiness. They tend to downplay this that happiness and contentment is a weakness, that you have to constantly be on that self-improving or really that narcissistic path, which can be really about kind of trying to obtain more supply. And not necessarily that they're um, not evolving and growing uh, personally, professionally, or in their family. It tends to oftentimes be to the exploitation of others or basically standing on their backs in order to keep their position intact. But eventually, um, those people's backs are going to break. Um, they, they are no longer going to continue that position. So that's why when we see those narcissistic um, individuals, you know, when they tend to retire from their jobs and they become, you know, just, you know, the, the unique individual that they are, oftentimes they have a very difficult time in retirement because they don't have a sense of who they are outside of their job. They are so uh, filled with the mask of their identity, who, which is uh, reinforced by others that they don't know how to really conduct the rest of their life. And so you see a lot of um, anger and um, unhappiness um, you know, in retirement from these individuals. They just don't know how to maintain that feeling. So they then look to others to scapegoat. So it's a very um, interesting thing. And it's just definitely something to protect yourself of and not take all the responsibility for because you're putting too much the weight of their own responsibility onto your shoulders and you're taking on too much of their life and their life purpose and really their own responsibility for their own emotional mastery. Instead, focus on your, your contentment, your wellness, your happiness. That is really what is most important and that is what's going to be with you um, throughout the days, weeks, and months to come in finding and doing things that are beneficial and bringing you the, the harmony, the contentment, the inner peace, um, and releasing that negative sort of voices and the self-criticizing and judgments that's holding you back. 
peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.